of uh, Eunice J. Ree. And the song is titled Uli Beba, playing on Hope FM, Listen and Leave. Great to have you here with us on Breath of Heaven, Thursday's edition of the program. And uh, you would call it Holy Thursday, Thursday before Good Friday. And we have the honor and privilege of having our guest in studio. He's already here to talk about matters to do with the health of our bones. And uh, we'll also be looking at nutrition and uh, how it relates to the health of our bones. Allow me to welcome to the studio uh, Dr. Brian Maluki, who is an orthopedic surgeon from AIC Cure International. Welcome, Dr. Thank you, uh, Dr. Yeah, it's great to have you here uh, on Breath of Heaven for the first time. And uh, looking forward to having a good, good time with you here, even as we'll be learning a thing or two regarding the health of our bones. And so probably you could tell us how uh, you're faring on there at uh, ASCQ. So, mm. uh, thank you for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we, we're doing well yes. in Kiwa. It's, uh, it's always, uh, um, I would say it's, uh, by the grace of God, a privilege to serve, uh, especially in a mission uh, kind of setup. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and being able to actually do what you love, what you like, and what, uh, fortunately, you've been able to school um, and be trained about mm -hmm. so it's, it's usually uh, something that I look forward to every day mm -hmm. um, being able to uh, get people moving again um, we call ourselves uh, human carpenters as they like <laughs> to tell us <laughs> why? <laughs> on the bones because uh -huh. uh, uh, most of our colleagues um, make, make a joke of the tools we use we use saws, we use mallets, mm -hmm. we use chisels, we use screwdrivers. Wow. <laughs> all of that. All of that. Um, and something that I reflect on is um, I, th I think of ourselves uh, like people who have been positioned to do what God actually uh, did. Mm -hmm. We restore uh, the function mm -hmm. or the bones or how God created human being, yes. um, especially the part of the musculoskeletal, the bones, mm -hmm. uh, into close to what God um, originally intended, mm -hmm. and and that's 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 satisfactory and mm -hmm. fulfilling. Wow! Yeah. I've never thought of it that way, but today, thank you. Thank you for sharing that and giving us that perspective. Yes. And so we're looking forward to having an insightful conversation tonight. We invite you, our listening friend, to go ahead and uh, text us. If you have a question or a comment, you can do so on 20933 on WhatsApp 0717400555 across our social media platforms at Hope FM Live using the hashtag Thursday edition, hashtag Paul born health and uh, of course um, we also live on facebook on youtube as well as on x and so that terry we want to look at this subject that is all about nutrition and born health and uh, we will just begin from there uh, what is that role of um, what what role rather does nutrition play in maintaining optimal born health um, thank you um, for actually uh, picking the topic. And um, I would say nutrition and bone health, um, it's, it's like the, the cornerstone of uh, what you do um, and what, what orthopedic uh, science is all about. Um, looking at um, the bone, you would think of it as the structural um, support of the body. Mm -hmm. With all the bones, uh, just like you look at a building when they put the pillars, they put the all those um, that the skeleton um, of a building. Then they come and put up the windows and all that. Mm -hmm. So I mean, um, the analogy is that if that structure, the quality of the building is actually um, equal or uh, akin to the quality of the foundation and the structure, the skeletal. And that's that's exactly what it relates to our bones mm -hmm. in the human being. Um, 
it's called the musculoskeletal stadium. So they coined, they borrowed that name from the skeleton. Yes. Um, and this, the old structure, we have more than um, 299 bones. No. <laughs> more than 299. Yeah, just uh, there are about 299. Uh -huh. um, and as long the, those bones, the rest fill up to make a functional human being. Um, and, and, and basically, if your bones are not in good, optimum state, uh, then it means as a human being, you will not be functional. And the musculoskeletal uh, system is all about mobility. It's about function. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that if your bone is not actually um, in good health, in optimum health, then you will not be functional. And that's why we see there's a whole spectrum of people and their act functionality or their activities is equal to their bone health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, from a child is very pre uh, playful to an old person who is now not able to actually be quite active is is about the bone health. Mm -hmm. So the topic of nutrition and bone health is, I think, is the cornerstone of what we do. Mm. Um, it's all about the bone health. We eat, Everything we do, it's uh, centered or is focused in um, granting a person the optimum um, health mm -hmm. and functionality in their bones. So again, uh, we see, I, th I think the kind of a cliche, you are what you eat. <laughs> um, and, and it's actually true. Uh, nutrition is what gives you the necessary components or then the materials, the raw materials that get into the body and they now used to make the bone health. Mm. And in the course of the discussion, we'll be looking at the crucial elements that actually uh, contribute to the health of the bone. Mm. And you will find that they actually come from whatever we eat. Uh, for example, the 99% of calcium um, is stored in the bones, um, in organic calcium. And calcium, we get it from most of uh, what we eat uh, from meat, proteins, um, and other cruciferous vegetables. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when we look at... Um, the the your your the health of your bones is actually a derivative of one whatever you eat in terms of nutrition a large percentage of it the second thing is your activity level okay yes that also contributes to the strength of your bones um and then the other thing is uh, a few things here and there depending on um, several diseases that affect the body and, and the, the old state of health of the body. Mm. Yes, but the key cornerstone is one, your nutrition and your activity level. Mm -hmm. Yes. Interesting that you've mentioned uh, the area of uh, nutrition uh, in terms of uh, what we eat and how it affects our bodies and more specifically the bones and then the issue of activity. So let's look at uh, now the key nutrients the, the key nutrients uh, that uh, are important for bone health and then how they can be incorporated in a daily diet that we can be taking on a daily. So we have uh, calcium is the largest, I think the uh, percentage of the, the mineral the, in terms of the density. We look at the percentages uh, calcium and we have uh, things like vitamin uh, D um, particularly the active uh, component of it, which we call calcitriol. Um, then we have things like zinc, manganese, and magnesium. So the, the, there's, there's a level or the amount that is what we call the recommended daily uh, allowance or intake that a person should take. And this varies from a, from a child to adolescent and also to the 
uh, all this. So when you're looking at all this intake or the nutrition, I look. I, I like to look at it in these three categories. Mm -hmm. When when a child is born to about five years of age, we we get the, um, that's we, we there's what we call growth spurt, and that's um, a period when the uh, there's a lot of growth that is happening to the child. Mm -hmm. Then the other uh, time is up between 10 years to teenagehood. And then from there you have from teenagehood all the way to about 30 years of age. And then uh, the rest is the old people. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so when you're looking at the nutrition um, and bone, there's what we call peak bone mass. And peak bone mass is the amount of bone tissue that a person can accumulate in their lifetime, the maximum. And the peak bone mass happens between teenagehood and all the way to about early 20s to 30s. Beyond that, you don't accumulate more bone mass, no matter how to, what to, whatever we do from there is maintaining what we have already gained. So um, part of these nutrients, um, key uh, sources of these nutrients in the child from zero to six months, we emphasize is the breast milk. Yeah. Somebody actually quoted that the neck, the most nutrition, um, the most nutritious meal is actually the uh, breast milk. Secondary to that is, second to that is the egg. Mm -hmm. In terms of the amount of the nutrients that it has, uh, so that is, okay. and then the next is meat. Mm -hmm. So most of the nutrients that um, we require for the bone health, they will be gained from one as a child is uh, zero to six is basically the mother's um, milk. Mm -hmm. And from there up to around three years is now when you introduce these regular foods, we have foods like um, meat, uh, meat of whichever kind as long as it's uh, consumable to, uh, to the human beings. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> then eggs, particularly the egg yolk, is quite rich in mm -hmm. calcium. Mm -hmm. um, then, uh, 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 then you have beans, you have uh, cruciferous vegetables like uh, your spinach. Um, then we have things like um, uh, broccoli uh, and the like. Then the other uh, nutrients you want to gain is uh, manganese, zinc, which can be found in some quality nuts like almonds, some ground nuts, um, and uh, zinc, uh, especially from the uh, pumpkin seeds, is very important. Um, the other mineral I would like to talk about is the vitamins. Okay. Um, our teacher in um, pharmacology and chemistry uses, used to say they are called vi vitamins because they are vital, vital uh, minerals, vital. Uh, so vitamin A is very important and you can get that from um, uh, pumpkins um, and a bit of, it, it's important in uh, wound healing and also the collagen synthesis. The other one is vitamin C. Mm -hmm. uh, which helps in collagen. Because again, bone is a tissue. Bone is made of not only the minerals, it also uh, uh, constitutes of the collagen, the type one collagen. And vitamin uh, type C, or vit uh, vitamin C is very important for that. The other is vitamin K, again, for healing, uh, which we can find in uh, the carrots and uh, the green vegetables as well. Some other small minerals, manganese and all that can be found. So, but the crucial is uh, proteins will give you the larger bit of it and um, uh, uh, both plant-based and also the, the right. animal-based. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so those, the, and, and I always prefer people getting it from the natural sources. And for each, for an adult, you see, we, we, we recommend about uh, 800, uh, about 1200 grams of calcium um, 
Adi, and uh, that is for 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 the male uh, tw- twelve hundred to about fifteen hundred for the male, twelve hundred for the women. And again, it also varies when now you come to the older people, um, who now, especially the ladies, once they get menopause. Mm-hmm. Because uh, the the role of estrogen at that point in time is estrogen is helps with maintain the bone density because it inhibits what we call the osteoclast function. Osteoclast function is uh, uh, reduces or kind of eats the bone away because there is what forms the bone and what. Uh, makes or, or regulates the bone or by making it just to have a balance. Mm-hmm. So once the estrogen is out for the menopause only, that's why we encourage a lot of uh, supplementation, especially for old uh, people that it. Mm-hmm. And then you find the spectrum that is here, the youth uh, who are very active, they also need to now be taking a lot of this uh, minerals that I've taken about, uh, the kind of foods that I've talked about. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, so the other thing I would uh, mention is that you find that there, there's some uh, things that we regularly eat and feed our children, which they negate uh, or are counterproductive. Mm-hmm. They are not adding to these things. Things like a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of sugar, especially for these uh, zero to five years, Mm -hmm. they actually don't need that. The other thing is vitamin D. Vitamin D and calcium, they are like brother and sister. They go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Uh, Vitamin D, which we get from sunlight, and it has to be unhindered or an inhibited sunlight exposure. It's not through the window. It's, <laughs> it's not when you go out when there is cloud in the sky. It has yeah. to be direct sunlight. Uh, initially, they used to say the morning hours in the evening, but it doesn't matter. Um, as long as you, you have adequate exposure, and this now is crucial for all age groups, all the way from a child all the way to the elderly population. They need to at least uh, that uh, minimum is thirty to sixty minutes, mm-hmm. and you exposure your hands, your face. For the children, we actually recommend taking their um, clothes off. Mm-hmm. Just leave them with a diaper for maximum sun exposure, because the 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 surface area you're exposing of the skin, because skin is what first absorbs, then uh, whatever it absorbs converts, then goes to the kidney, then goes to the liver so that you can have the active form of vitamin D. Mm-hmm. And vitamin D now helps you to maximally absorb the calcium that you're intaking mm-hmm. through the mouth and from the dietary mm-hmm. sources. Mm-hmm. So that's why if you don't get enough vitamin D exposure, then even the calcium supplements that you get, most of the time won't be helping. Because now mm-hmm. you whatever you need to absorb from your gut, it's not working because the vitamin D is not there. Mm. So that's why it's very important for for uh, parents, um, especially who are, have these young children, to be very, very, um, um, uh, to emphasize this. Mm. And if you as a parent or you have a house help, make sure these children, they get sun exposure. And unfortunately, as we will go, uh, you know, discussion when you discuss the repercussions of why you uh, not, not uh, optimum, not having optimum bone health. Mm. Some of the things that we are actually seeing in our population is that people don't get um, adequate sun exposure and adequate nutrition, especially in this young age, which is our ma- the major patient population that we attend to. They have those issues that arise from. Um, suboptimal bone health, mm-hmm. like rickets and, and so forth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Dr. Maluki is with us tonight here on Breath of Heaven, dissecting you know the truth regarding what has to do with nutrition and bone health, and um, hearing a lot from him, especially what has to do with vitamin D and uh, how lack of it can actually uh, lead to some conditions, which we'll be talking about in a little while. And uh, you're welcome to share with us your questions or your comments on our SMS line 20933 or you could WhatsApp on 0717 just sharing uh, what you think about uh, tonight's conversation. And we are live on Facebook, on YouTube, and on X. I see a number of you already there. Uh, Lafta Moja Wasiga Hadasawa Mash saying, uh, that is my senior colleague and consultant. Hadassah, right there, uh, following closely. Yeah. I've seen Rosella Waoma as well as uh, uh, Bartes with Chuli from Naivasha. Did Naivasha know? Uh, Navaholo, yeah, initiative group there, uh, uh, disability initi initiative group, as well as Amy Musimbi Lumbasia. Thank you so much for joining us. And so at the top of the hour, we have Fresh with Bernie. Then a quick look at the weather, not forgetting our time of... Um, listening to a song, uh, our artist of the week uh, being uh, one uh, artist here known as Michael W. Smith. We'll get to listen to one of his songs in a little while. Did you know the listen. Friends of Hope is an initiative of Hope Media? Through this initiative, we are able to partner with others who are keen to ensure that we keep hope alive. Through your support, we are sharing the hope we have with many others who are yet to embrace hope. You too can become a part of this initiative today. Send your contribution of any amount to M-Pesa pay bill number 933-933. Account name Friends of Hope. For more information regarding Friends of Hope, please email friendsofhope at hopefm.org or SMS FOH to 20933. Join Friends of Hope today. Friends of Hope, keeping hope alive. Another quality service from Christ is the answer. Did you know the Friends of Hope is an initiative of Hope Media? Through this initiative, we are able to partner with others who are keen to ensure that we keep hope alive. Through your support, we are sharing the hope we have. I've actually been trying to find a balance. Um, it's been really tough and hectic, but everyone says once you get a hang of it, it becomes better. And I don't know, but I'm hoping to find a balance soon because it's really been hectic. But you've been in the job industry for a long time, so I think you would know better, Sindio. Huh? What time is it? Ah! I need to catch up on leadership forum. Do they have a radio here? Uh... Ah, never mind. I broke my own. <gasps> no way. You can't be serious. Wait, why do you have a radio and you can just catch up with the shows on Hope FM podcast? Really? Even Miss of the What? Yeah. I mean, you can find them on whatever platform, name it, Apripods, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, um, Spotify, you name it. But I'm not subscribed on any of them. Oh. oh, no worries. You can just check out the latest episodes on hopemediakenya.org. You can now listen to select Hope FM programs on your favorite podcast streaming platform or directly on our website, www.hopemediakenya.org. Listen and live. I've actually been trying to find a balance. Um, it's been really tough and hectic, but everyone says once you get a hang of it, it becomes better. And I don't know, but I'm hoping to find a balance soon because it's really been hectic. But you've been in the job industry for a long time, so I think you would know better, Sindio. Huh? What time is it? Ah! I need to catch up on leadership forum. Do they have a radio here? Uh, ah, never mind. I broke my own. <gasps> no way. You can't be serious. Wait, why do you have a radio and you can just catch up with the shows on Hope FM podcast? Really? Even Miss of the What? Yeah. I mean, you can find them on whatever platform, name it, Apripods, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, um, Spotify, you name it. But I'm not subscribed on any of them. Oh. oh, no worries. You can just check out the latest episodes on hopemediakenya.org. You can now listen to select Hope FM programs on your favorite podcast streaming platform 
or directly on our website www.hopemediakenya.org Listen and live. You the listener are the reason why we go on air. You the friend of hope are the reason why hope is alive. You have helped us take hope across the country and to the rest of the world. Through your giving, we have been on air for 18 years and witnessed many people coming to the Lord. Through your giving, we have expanded our reach to three new regions, namely Kisi, Nyeri, and Meru. Through your giving, we have expanded our reach to an international audience through DSTV and GoTV platforms. Thank you for your sacrifice and generosity toward this great initiative. As we continue spreading hope to the other enriched regions in Kenya, you are invited to be part of the Friends of Hope through a contribution of any amount via M-Pesa Pay Bill 933933, account name FOH. Friends of Hope, keeping hope alive. God bless you. You, the listener, are the reason why we go on air. You, the friend of hope, are the reason why hope is alive. You have helped us take hope across the country and to the rest of the world. Through your giving, we have been on air for 18 years and witnessed many people coming to the Lord. Through your giving, we have expanded our reach to three new regions, namely Kisi, Nyeri, and Meru. Through your giving, we have expanded our reach to an international audience through DSTV and GoTV platforms. Thank you for your sacrifice and generosity toward this great initiative. As we continue spreading hope to the other enriched regions in Kenya, you are invited to be part of the Friends of Hope through a contribution of any amount via M-Pesa Pay Bill 933933, account name FOH. Friends of Hope, keeping hope alive. God bless you. You, the listener, are the reason why we go on air. You, the friend of hope, are the reason why hope is alive. You have helped us take hope across the country and to the rest of the world. Through your giving, we have been on air for 18 years and witnessed many people coming to the Lord. Through your giving, we have expanded our reach to three new regions, namely Kisi, Nyeri, and Meru. Through your giving, we have expanded our reach to an international audience through DSTV and GoTV platforms. Thank you for your sacrifice and generosity toward this great initiative. As we continue spreading hope to the other enriched regions in Kenya, you are invited to be part of the Friends of Hope through a contribution of any amount via M-Pesa Pay Bill 933933, account name FOH. Friends of Hope, keeping hope alive. God bless you. You, the listener, are the reason why we go on air. You, the friend of hope, are the reason why hope is alive. You have helped us take hope across the country and to the rest of the world. Through your giving, we have been on air for 18 years and witnessed many people coming to the Lord. Through your giving, we have expanded our reach to three new regions, namely Kisi, Nyeri, and Meru. Through your giving, we have expanded our reach to an international audience through DSTV and GoTV platforms. Thank you for your sacrifice and generosity toward this great initiative. As we continue spreading hope to the other enriched regions in Kenya, you are invited to be part of the Friends of Hope through a contribution of any amount via M-Pesa Pay Bill 933933, account name FOH. Friends of Hope, keeping hope alive. God bless you. You, the listener, are the reason why we go on air. You, the friend of hope, are the reason why hope is alive. You have helped us take hope across the country and to the rest of the world. Through your giving, we have been on air for 18 years and witnessed many people coming to the Lord. Through your giving, we have expanded our reach to three new regions, namely Kisi, Nyeri, and Meru. Through your giving, we have expanded our reach to an international audience through DSTV and GoTV platforms. Thank you for your sacrifice and generosity toward this great initiative. 
As we continue spreading hope to the other enriched regions in Kenya, you are invited to be part of the Friends of Hope through a contribution of any amount via M-Pesa Pay Bill 933933, account name FOH. Friends of Hope, keeping hope alive. God bless you. You, the listener, are the reason why we go on air. You, the friend of hope, are the reason why hope is alive. You have helped us take hope across the country and to the rest of the world. Through your giving, we have been on air for 18 years and witnessed many people coming to the Lord. Through your giving, we have expanded our reach to three new regions, namely Kisi, Nyeri, and Meru. Through your giving, we have expanded our reach to an international audience through DSTV and GoTV platforms. Thank you for your sacrifice and generosity toward this great initiative. As we continue spreading hope to the other enriched regions in Kenya, you are invited to be part of the Friends of Hope through a contribution of any amount via M-Pesa Pay Bill 933933, account name FOH. Friends of Hope, keeping hope alive. God bless you. You, the listener, are the reason. Welcome to the world of Hope Media, a media unit of Christ is the Answer Ministries that is committed to spreading the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ through the transformative power of media. Hope Media is dedicated to utilizing various forms of media to spread the message of hope, love, and redemption to all people around the world. Hope Media consists of various units that work together to achieve this goal. These units include Hope FM. Hope FM is your number one Christian radio station offering you discussions on current day-to-day -day issues, inspiring music, life-changing sermons and news updates, broadcasting 80% in English and 20% in Swahili with listenership of over 12 million every month. Hope TV Hope TV programming is designed to inspire, educate, and challenge the viewer with wholesome content to reach various demographic groups, children, youth, and adults, both male and female, with viewership of over 24 million every month. Hope Recording Studios Hope Recording Studios is a state-of-the-art recording facility that offers high-quality recording, mixing, and mastering services. It is designed to meet the needs of musicians, artists, and other creative professionals who require top-notch recording facilities. Hope Creative At Hope Creatives, we believe that inspiring graphic design work doesn't just happen. It takes the right people with wild out-of-the-box ideas committed to the same ideals working together to make it happen. We listen, we learn, we brand. Hope Digital Hope Digital is a creative digital unit within Hope Media. We are driven by a passion to creatively express ourselves while influencing you with the same creative energy in online spaces and beyond. At Hope Media, we believe that media can be a powerful tool for spreading the message of hope as well as grow your business through advertisements and we do this with excellence. For more information regarding our services, please visit www.hopemediakenya.org or call us on 0709-861-180. Hope Media, we keep hope alive. Welcome to the world of Hope Media.
successes through his music have made him a respected and influential figure in the industry. And this week we celebrated him here on Breath of Heaven. And so it's now 10 minutes past eight. Welcome to the second hour of Breath of Heaven. And we are having a conversation revolving around the health of our bones and specifically is yes, looking at matters nutrition because plays a major role in the health of our bones. We're also giving you an opportunity to get in touch with us. You can text us or you can uh, go ahead and, uh, you know, WhatsApp us. Our text line is 20933. What's up on 0717-400555 across our social media platforms at Hope FM Live using the hashtag Thursday edition, hashtag Bone Health. Dr. Uh, Brian Maluki is helping us um, have more insights regarding this and so Dr. let's carry on and uh, i think we'll also now touch on uh, some of the areas where um, uh, lack of bone health would result uh, would result to or some of the areas now people who maybe are not keen on taking good care of their bones or maybe they don't know how to do so uh, what they are risking in terms of uh, the health of their bones and so i, I would ask this question are there any now any dietary recommendations for individuals at risk of uh, getting you know conditions such as osteoporosis and uh, other bone related conditions when we talk about the dietary co recommendations and all if somebody does not you know get to that uh, what you'd call optimum or what is required uh, getting uh, the risk of osteoporosis or other bone related conditions um, so the dietary recommendations, as um, we talked earlier, mm -hmm. is optimize the your intake of proteins um, and calcium-rich diets and uh, vitamin C, um, vitamin K, and also um, phosphates. Um, <clears throat> that, as as far as it goes to the intake, because again, the policy is prevention is better than cure. So it's, um and um, optimum uh, vitamin D uh, through sun exposure and <clears throat> yeah. So, but once um, if a patient gets to uh, now gets some of the deficiencies, um, so we have to supplement. For children, we have to uh, once we do um, the workup as uh, the investigations that we do if it's the labs check their vitamin D, calcium. Mm. So the, we have appropriate dosage of the supplementation that we give. Um, but for a normal healthy person, I always recommend you don't need any form of supplementation. Just get it natural. Mm. Optimize your intake. Um, and one way of optimizing your intake of the um, these vital um, minerals that uh, as, as it pertains to the nutrition, uh, to the bone health, is avoid these um, other foods. You'll notice that if you have a, your plate of um, a, a plate of ugali with fish and all that, sometimes if you what what happens mostly is that if you take your carbohydrates, they give you they fill your stomach faster and limit the amount of your protein that you will take in vegetables. Um, and that's why I like to actually encourage people uh, be in the habit of taking these um, a lot of proteins and vegetables mm. um, and limit your carbohydrates um, a lot. Let, let that be, if, if you have a plate and you divide it into like quarters or that make sure protein gets like half of it. Then you divide the two to the, uh, then you get, get the other, um, like two thirds of it to be protein and vegetables and the other to be your carbohydrates, mm. the very little. And if you can have, actually avoid the carbohydrates, the better. You actually don't need them. Um, yeah, cause whatever you, you need, um, you get actually from the proteins including because because the question is always if i don't take carbohydrates where am i getting the calories mm -hmm. um and uh 
those proteins, a gram of protein will give you four uh, kilocalories, uh -huh. which is equivalent to the same amount of one gram of uh, carbohydrates will give you uh, four kilocalories. But unfortunately, the carbohydrates will give you the empty calories. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else besides the calories they're giving you. But once you get the proteins, they give you addition of some vitamins, some micronutrients, which are good. And that's why you, you for the children, you see, um, we only see the, the size of the stomach of a child mm -hmm. is the size of their fist. Mm -hmm. And now imagine how much they will take. If you want to put carbohydrates, you want to put all these other things. Mm -hmm. So so for children, um, you want to optimize. The small amount they want to take, optimize and give them quality. And that is in terms of give them that egg, give them that minced meat, soup, bone broth, give them that, uh, if, there's, if, if it's the um, carrots, the broccoli, the spinach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you find that by the time your child is getting almost five or spoonfuls of what, all these, um, they don't have space to put the carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. And you would rather op prioritize giving them these crucial nutrients in this. Mm -hmm. So now for the, so for, for if you're healthy, you're active, you don't have any underlying diseases that limit the absorption of the crucial minerals, then you don't need supplementation. Just take the optimum um, foods, natural foods. Mm. And unfortunately now when we get to supplements, then for the, the industry, most of the time, the supplements, we have them, they're not in the form that they actually the body will absorb. Mm. Most of them are synthetic. They actually, you don't get anything out of it. Um, and if you have, if, if so the supplements, the what whatever to, the supplement is just to add on, not to exclusively say that this is, you will depend on that. So, and that can be calculated either by the nutritionist to give you the, the your recommended goal of whatever you have. Mm -hmm. Um, before now the onset of disease or once you have the onset of diseases. So the other thing you want to look at is there are conditions that limit the optimum absorption of these crucial minerals that you have talked about. Mm. Some inflammatory conditions like people who have gluten intolerance, people who have Crohn, uh, Crohn's disease, um, they have what you call leaky gut syndrome because of inflammation of their gut. Mm -hmm. So those, those, those are people, the they, number one goal is actually to treat this condition so that you will be able to absorb the vitamin D, will be able to help the calcium to be absorbed from the walls of the small intestines mm -hmm. so that you can have the optimum intake. Um, the, other, the other conditions is like diabetes. Diabetes, if you have uncontrolled diabetes, again, it limits the amount of the optimum minerals that you get no matter how much you take. Mm -hmm. So you need the, di the diabetes to be well controlled, well treated, um, to be, uh, to be uh, yeah, what we call controlled um, state by whatever uh, medication that you, um, uh, pro uh, your, care, your practitioner or uh, physician will recommend. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing is that you want to, uh, if the people with kidney disease, again, kidney is uh, kidneys play a very important role um, in terms of vitamin D mm -hmm. um, processing and also absorption of some minerals like phosphates and also calcium. So if your kidneys are not optimum, you have patients who are in kidney failure, they have to have the disease controlled even before we talk about supplementation. Mm. So those have to go hand in hand. Because if your kidneys are not, again, functional, the part of the vitamin D2, what we call um, hydroxy vitamin D2, it's, it won't be processed mm. um, by your vitamins. And, and, and this is crucial. Again, the people with liver issues, and these are people either with a fatty liver, people who are, take alcohol, mm. Uh, again, your your liver is not functional. If your liver is, you have a fatty liver, it's inflammatory, it's not able to generate the vitamin D3, which is active vitamin D, that you will need 
in order to get the necessary minerals like mm. the calcium which will be taken to the bone in the phosphate mm. so you have so the so these the things that will optimize your so besides optimizing intake you want to optimize absorption and by limiting all these other factors that limit the absorption mm. things like hiv aids um in the spectrum of um bone health is very crucial and as long as uh we found that before people who had um control or uh, the hiv is well treated they actually get a lot of fractures because of bone wasting they don't have good bone health um so that those are the, some of the conditions they have to be optimally treated and taken care of mm-hmm. in order so that whatever you're in taking from the nutrition you're able to optimize on it mm-hmm. um then the uh yeah i think i've t- uh, we, we've talked about the all those diseases uh, the, yeah I, I, i think you know our setup those are the common that you see uh things like rheumatoid arthritis inflammatory sle those have to be optimally taken care of the other thing i would like to emphasize is that the people who abuse steroids mm. um and steroids the cortisol uh, prednisolone <clears throat> so the steroids they have a negative effect on the bone health they uh, encourage bone resorption instead of resorption is now the wasting away instead of bone mineralization mm. accumulation of these minerals that we are taking so for people who are not taking care of these things that will limit this then they are at high risk the other population is the people who abuse drugs and especially smoking mm. smoking um in smoking is an enemy when it comes to bone health bone uh healing from a fracture just uh, uh or just maintaining that peak bone mass smoking is hazardous and it has very many ways that it interferes with that both from um inhibiting the amount the the amount of nutrients go by causing what we call um shrinking or close, closing of the the narrowing of the vessels mm-hmm. to inhibiting the cells that actually build the bone so smoky and and that's why as orthopedics if if we get a person who actually is a chronic smoker before we attend to them on any orthopedic elective orthopedic procedure we tell them first we need you to have a minimum of one month that you are you have quit smoking because again it has all uh, these hazardous effect both on the bone and also on, on even the other soft tissues the muscles and lot of you mm-hmm. yes wow i'm learning a lot i'm learning a lot especially those things that uh, we might have been oblivious of the danger that lacks behind especially uh, those things that we do you know on a daily you know the use of steroids you know the 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 exposure to smoking you know uh, drinking you know you've mentioned that and uh, you know having hiv aids uh, and all that and so for somebody who is in that category probably if i didn't hear well you could um, share a word of advice uh, apart from you, you've had the, uh, you you've talked about the smoker you give them one month to quit so that you can you know go on with the elective surgery or whatever procedure that should be taken uh, what in terms of now nutrition these people in this category maybe that smoker that person who is drinking that person who has been given to steroids drug abuse and all what kind of advice would you give them so um work with um i mean putting these these things are actually habitual mm. and getting help uh, rehabilitation and all that would help um and cuz cuz quitting is is a journey you can quit like today i would stop it's it's usually a journey and we work with either the psychologists the counselors to help us and get in this journey of uh, rehabilitating these people mm-hmm. and all from there now you get also on to optimum intake of the nutrients that we talked about so that you it's a, it's a balance of both reduce this increase the intake of this so that you actually um able to get uh um the op- what is optimum for uh building your bones mm-hmm. um then yeah, it, it, 
think that uh, and and for the good thing is much of these diseases that I talked about, mm -hmm. there are treatment for that, and get to your the endocrinologist, the physician, and so forth to be able to optimize and treat you. Um, and actually, the the people who have their HIV control, diabetes control, they actually live longer. They get to build their peak bone mass, mm -hmm. in addition to some of the other things that we'll talk about building uh, the peak bone mass, like the, the, the amount of physical activity that you uh, you do. Um, they actually get on that. Steroids use, once you stop, they actually, you're able to, your body tends to actually, once you're free this, uh, of the steroids, you're able to build up your bone um, health and other side effects of that. Um, and sometimes you give, like a vitamin E, especially to help um, for those patients, for those people who have been abusing like the vitamin, the uh, steroids. Mm -hmm. Vitamin E is very good in reversing some of the effects of the steroid use. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, we'll be getting to the questions from the listener in just a little while, but there is this one here that I would like you to address. How does weight management and overall nutrition impact bone health, especially in older adults? So um, weight means that um, for the obese people is that you are actually overloading your joints, you're overloading your um, your bones. And that's why most, I, th I think number one, and this, thing, this is something that has actually been studied and published, number one, a uh, driver or accelerator for people to get osteoarthritis number is obesity you the impact or the weight that you're carrying mm -hmm. uh leads to you now getting injuries a cartilage and all that the other thing is that you have a lot of fat in your adipose uh, uh, the adipocytes that limits actually their uh, one, um, the, amount, the the working of your osteoblasts. And um, again, the other thing is that you overweight, you tend to tip into what you call these inflammatory conditions and you're not able to actually absorb most of these minerals. But again, is that's why in the Western countries, uh, the issue of osteoarthritis is quite a big deal because of the obesity. But again, it's not even far off. It's here in our, in, in our country. Mm -hmm. And they found that actually getting these people to actually get into their normal or just the optimum BMI, it actually reduces their orthopedic issues, mm -hmm. the bone pains, the osteoarthritis. It slows, it, it slows that cartilage degeneration and the issues that happen as a result of the osteoarthritis. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you know, people should uh, work on, uh, you know, the weight and all that. And, exactly. And, and uh, how, how do they do so working on their weight? So number one, it starts in the kitchen. Okay. Yeah, 80%. Then the rest is physical activity. Because uh -huh. again, there will be no benefit of you. you uh, actually, what we advise, if you're obese, again, the risk of you, if you're involved in very aggressive um, physical activity, the risk of injuring yourself is quite high. Mm. And actually, and your bones at that time, they're not that strong. So start in the kitchen, get your weight okay. Start with low impact activities like walking, yeah, um, like um, uh, mostly walking, uh, a bit of uh, jogging, um, you see, and maybe some aerobic exercises. And once your weight is well controlled, then you can go to some of the higher in impact activities. Mm -hmm. So that that's that's usually the sequel. You don't start hitting the gym because you're overweight. Mm -hmm. Start in the kitchen, manage your weight, low impact activities as you go to moderate activities and eventually high, high, high end activities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Tonight, Dr. Brian Maluki is helping us learn more about the health of our bones in relation to matters nutrition. You're welcome to send your questions or your comments to 20933 on WhatsApp 0717400555. And we'll be looking at those questions in a little Did you know the Friends of Hope is an initiative of Hope Media? Through this initiative, we are able to partner with others who are keen to ensure that we keep hope alive. 
through your support, we are sharing the hope we have with many others who are yet to embrace hope. You too can become a part of this initiative today. Send your contribution of any amount to M-Pesa pay bill number 933-933. Account name Friends of Hope. For more information regarding Friends of Hope, please email friendsofhope at hopefm.org or SMS FOH to 20933. Join Friends of Hope today. Friends of Hope, keeping hope alive. Another quality service from Christ is the answer. Did you know the Friends of Hope is an initiative of Hope Media? Through this initiative, we are able to partner with others who are keen to ensure that we keep hope alive. Through your support, we are sharing the hope we have with many others who are yet to embrace hope. You too can become a part of this initiative today. Send your contribution of any amount to M-Pesa pay bill number 933-933. Account name Friends of Hope. For more information regarding Friends of Hope, please email friendsofhope at hopefm.org or SMS FOH to 20933. Join Friends of Hope today. Friends of Hope, keeping hope alive. Another quality service from Christ is the answer. Did you know the Friends of Hope is an initiative of Hope Media? Through this initiative, we are able to partner with others who are keen to ensure that we keep hope alive. Through your support, we are sharing the hope we have with many others who are yet to embrace hope. You too can become a part of this initiative today. Send your contribution of any amount to M-Pesa pay bill number 933-933. Account name Friends of Hope. For more information regarding Friends of Hope, please email friendsofhope at hopefm.org or SMS FOH to 20933. Join Friends of Hope today. Friends of Hope, keeping hope alive. Another quality service from Christ is the answer. Did you know the Friends of Hope is an initiative of Hope Media? Through this initiative, we are able to partner with others who are keen to ensure that we keep hope alive. Through your support, we are sharing the hope we have with many others who are yet to embrace hope. You too can become a part of this initiative today. Send your contribution of any amount to M-Pesa pay bill number 933-933. Account name Friends of Hope. For more information regarding Friends of Hope, please email friendsofhope at hopefm.org or SMS FOH to 20933. Join Friends of Hope today. Friends of Hope, keeping hope alive. Another quality service from Christ is the answer. Did you know the Friends of Hope is an initiative of Hope Media? Through this initiative, we are able to partner with others who are keen to ensure that we keep hope alive. Through your support, we are sharing the hope we have with many others who are yet to embrace hope. You too can become a part of this initiative today. Send your contribution of any amount to M-Pesa pay bill number 933-933. Account name Friends of Hope. For more information regarding Friends of Hope, please email friendsofhope at hopefm.org or SMS FOH to 20933. Join Friends of Hope today. Friends of Hope, keeping hope alive. Another quality service from Christ is the answer. Did you know the Friends of Hope is an initiative of Hope Media? Through this initiative, we are able to partner with others who are keen to ensure that we keep hope alive. Through your support, we are sharing the hope we have with many others who are yet to embrace hope. You too can become a part of this initiative today. Send your contribution of any amount to M-Pesa pay bill number 933-933. Account name Friends of Hope. For more information regarding Friends of Hope, please email friendsofhope at hopefm.org or SMS FOH to 20933. Join Friends of Hope today. Friends of Hope, keeping hope alive. Another quality service from Christ is the answer. Did you know the Friends of Hope is an initiative of Hope Media? Through this initiative, we are able to partner with others who are keen to ensure that we keep hope alive. Through your support, we are sharing the hope we have with many others who are yet to embrace hope. You too can become a part of this initiative today. Send your contribution of any amount to M-Pesa pay bill number 933-933. Account name Friends of Hope. For more information regarding Friends of Hope, please email friendsofhope at hopefm.org or SMS FOH to 20933. Join Friends of Hope today. Friends of Hope, keeping hope alive. Another quality service from Christ is the answer. 
Did you know the Friends of Hope is an initiative of Hope Media? Through this initiative, we are able to partner with others who are keen to ensure that we keep hope alive. Through your support, we are sharing the hope we have with many others who are yet to embrace hope. You too can become a part of this initiative today. Send your contribution of any amount to M-Pesa pay bill number 933-933. Account name Friends of Hope. For more information regarding Friends of Hope, please email friendsofhope at hopefm.org or SMS FOH to 20933. Join Friends of Hope today. Friends of Hope, keeping hope alive. Another quality service from Christ is the answer. Did you know the Friends of Hope is an initiative of Hope Media? Through this initiative, we are able to partner with others who are keen to ensure that we keep hope alive. Through your support, we are sharing the hope we have with many others who are yet to embrace hope. You too can become a part of this initiative today. Send your contribution of any amount to M-Pesa pay bill number 933-933. Account name Friends of Hope. For more information regarding Friends of Hope, please email friendsofhope at hopefm.org or SMS FOH to 20933. Join Friends of Hope today. Friends of Hope, keeping hope alive. Another quality service from Christ is the answer. Did you know the Friends of Hope is an initiative of Hope Media? Through this initiative, we are able to partner with others who are keen to ensure that we keep hope alive. Through your support, we are sharing the hope we have with many others who are yet to embrace hope. You too can become a part of this initiative today. Send your contribution of any amount to M-Pesa pay bill number 933-933. Account name Friends of Hope. For more information regarding Friends of Hope, please email friendsofhope at hopefm.org or SMS FOH to 20933. Join Friends of Hope today. Friends of Hope, keeping hope alive. Another quality service from Christ is the answer. Did you know the Friends of Hope is an initiative of Hope Media? Through this initiative, we are able to partner with others who are keen to ensure that we keep hope alive. Through your support, we are sharing the hope we have with many others who are yet to embrace hope. You too can become a part of this initiative today. Send your contribution of any amount to M-Pesa pay bill number 933-933. Account name Friends of Hope. For more information regarding Friends of Hope, please email friendsofhope at hopefm.org or SMS FOH to 20933. Join Friends of Hope today. Friends of Hope, keeping hope alive. Another quality service from Christ is the answer. Did you know the Friends of Hope is an initiative of Hope Media? Through this initiative, we are able to partner with others who are keen to ensure that we keep hope alive. Through your support, we are sharing the hope we have with many others who are yet to embrace hope. You too can become a part of this initiative today. Send your contribution of any amount to M-Pesa pay bill number 933-933. Account name Friends of Hope. For more information regarding Friends of Hope, please email friendsofhope at hopefm.org or SMS FOH to 20933. Join Friends of Hope today. Friends of Hope, keeping hope alive. Another quality service from Christ is the answer. This particular subject that we are delving into, and so I'll go right ahead and um, ask uh, Dr. Tari to uh, look at some of these questions. There is one here, just appreciating the program. Felicity from Meru saying a very educative topic and um, saying, uh, what causes arthritis very common in Meru? This is Felicity uh, receiving us from that uh, area uh, of Meru. Um, so I think uh, she's, th th there are quite an, uh, types of arthritis because arthritis by arthritis means uh, it's inflammation of the joints. Arthro means joint. Itis means inflammation. The most common um, type of arthritis in our population mostly is osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis inflammation of around the joints. Eh? And that is what is most common. I think I've, I've, uh, during our clinic, I've worked around marrow and, and that's that's one of the cause. Uh, and the most common cause is, uh, again, it relates to individual activities that we do. Um, people 
who are very active. They've been doing a lot of um, heavy um, activities that involve uh, strenuous, like going to the farms, walking, carrying uh, a lot of uh, weights uh, on the back and all that. That that it's it, it, it accelerates or predisposes one to uh, osteoarthritis because again it's it's a wear and tear. That's what we call it. It's, it's degeneration. You, it's wear, just like a car. Um, like a the more you drive a car, the more your tires wear and or the brake pads and all that. So it's it's actually the same thing. They undergo wear and tear. So you find a person who is very active, they've been going to the farms, they carry heavy loads on the back, they strain their back, so they are more predisposed to that kind of activity. Mm -hmm. you, you look at people who are high impact activity like the runners, most of the time after a few years, uh, they will start complaining of the joint aches and they get um, that kind of uh, osteoarthritis. People who carry heavy loads on their back, they will complain of osteoarthritis of the back. So that is the most common um, cause of the predisposing factors. Because again, in our population, most of, uh, besides now, uh, the obesity, which is actually coming up uh, pretty fast because of the sedentary lifestyle and our nutrition, the second uh, cause is what I'm talking about, uh, those eye impact activities. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why we recommend if the back care or appropriate level of activity, high Im impact activity, which is appropriate to uh, the conditioning of your body. Uh, the same way for a for a person, if you're going to the gym the first time, you can go and do a deadlift of 120 kgs or 80 kgs around. You have to start small. If you go to start doing heavy lifting and you're doing it in the incorrect way, then you are more predisposed to injury. So it has to be uh, all those ergonomics, um, yeah, they have to be taken care of, mm -hmm. yes. So I think that 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 I would uh, relate to the, the cause of uh, the osteoarthritis in such a population. Mm -hmm. Another one here is asking: Is back pain after childbirth a bone or muscle problem, and can be can it be cured? Yes, it can. It can be cured, and it's both. Usually, the 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 back pain, uh, what we call mechanical back pain. Uh, but but what 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 she's saying about childbirth? It, um, what happens during childbirth? What uh, especially in the third trimester, we there is a hormone that is called uh, relaxing that is released. Um, it, it helps to relax, uh, it, especially in, in in preparation for birth, to open up uh, the pelvis to give birth, and unfortunately, it also has effects on all whatever there is joint and all that. Mm -hmm. And again, in that trimester, what happens is that because of how the size of the uterus, you they get what exaggerated coverage of the back, um, the lordosis, what we call lordosis, in order to for them to balance stability and also what you call the mechanical axis, the tra weight transmission, so that they have that stability. Mm -hmm. So once you have that, that's why the, there is a lot of strain and they get back pains in in in. Uh, during pregnancy. Fortunately, after that, once the hormone relax, uh, relaxing is um, whatever its time period and its function is over, they get back to normal. So, what, um, and what happens first is that you get, when I look at uh, back pain in the other population, what happens first is that you strain your muscles first. They are tensed because of uh, either straining by way of uh, poor um, economics and lifting and straining activity, then what happens? When your muscles are tense, you get a straight, what we call sometimes when you do an X-ray on a person, you find their bones are straight. They don't have that curve. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing is that now, the bones now, once your muscles are tense, they, 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 they have reached the elastic limit, then what happens is that now you start straining you, compensating with you, your bo your your, your the, the vertebral body or the this the the now the bones mm -hmm. 
So now it becomes a whole muscle plus bone issue. So for the post-pregnancy, you want to focus on core strengthening and stretching exercises just to bring back the strength in your core mm -hmm. and restore that normal curvature on your back from the way it had been uh, distorted by the pregnancy. And usually after, uh, and, and now avoid activities that e.g. bending, lifting things when you're bending and all that, it will actually mitigate and you will actually um, reverse the condition. Mm -hmm. It's very possible. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. That helps. Uh, I see another one here saying, hello, Jackson and Daktari. This is Munene from Moem. Uh, kindly respond to these two questions. As a teacher, how best can I take care of my bone health, bearing in mind that I stand for long hours? And secondly, how best would um, an expectant lady who is in her first trimester take care of her bone health? So for responding to the teacher, uh, standing for long mm -hmm. hours, um, you want to be you 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 should be taking breaks, uh, take breaks, sit, uh, have a balance of both. And the other thing is that have the appropriate shoe wear, because mm -hmm. um, again, when you it's either you are putting on flat shoes, it alters your mechanical. Uh, axis the weight transmission you want you want a shoe that has like a one inch two inch heel um and it's sloping with a like 0 0.5 inch on the on the forefoot or the front of the foot so that when you're standing you actually your 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 back your back resumes its normal curvature because of the weight transmission because the thing that strains our back is trying to compensate for abnormal uh, weight transmission and take backs take breaks and the other thing is that be involved in activity like jogging um, uh, aerobics just to build your core and resistance training um yeah just to build your core uh because number one, the other uh, uh, a weak core will always predispose you to back pain mm -hmm. and the other thing for teachers they sit for long periods especially when they're marking yeah. and when you could look at the seats they sit on their seats, they don't have actually very, they're not ergonomic chairs. They sometimes reach to the half of the back and they're not very comfortable. That's the other thing. And when they mark or they're using their laptops, they tend to actually stoop or bow. That will strain your upper back. And we are seeing a lot of cases from teachers because of upper back pain, because of, and even people who sit in the office, because they don't have nice chairs with, nice uh, back support. Mm. So I encourage um, no sitting for long, taking breaks. Yes, that, that would mitigate and now engage in an activity program to strengthen your core. Mm. For the lady is that uh, we, we've talked about the nutrition. Yeah. That's basically, especially during pregnancy, the, um, the, the, the need to take a lot of calcium rich uh, and protein uh, rich foods. Um, Yes, and now she has to be active. Mm -hmm. Just low impact activity, walking, some yoga, which is appropriate. And I think that that from the gynecology, from the obstetrician side, they are able to advise which are activities that are appropriate in such in whichever trimester uh, they are in. But nutrition wise, doesn't change because these are foods that will not affect the natural foods, will not affect the health of the baby, mm -hmm. and actually they are very also. Uh, good for the health of the baby. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Well, uh, see, uh, there are also parents here uh, who are asking on behalf of their children, especially matters now to do with the nutrition. Uh, what that, first of all, uh, for somebody who is uh, diabetic, has arthritis as well as pressure, what uh, what is the diet that can be given to one who is diabetic? has arthritis and uh, high blood pressure, I presume. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll go back to just what we talked about. Um, you want a high protein uh, diet and high vegetable um, diet. And if you have to do carbs, do the complex uh, stretches uh, like Nduma, like um, that is the arrowroots and sweet potatoes. The thing is that these complex starches, like the 
the sweet potatoes, in addition to just giving you the complex starch, they also have beta carotene, mm. which has quite good antioxidants. And most of these, um, most of these uh, um, conditions, they are inflammatory in origin. So you want to give your body foods that no, do not exacerbate the inflammation around that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think um, that, that that would be my recommendation. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, uh, this is a parent who is asking on behalf of a child, an eight-year-old child mm -hmm. who is given to eating a lot of bread. And uh, the parent is uh, wondering, what, what can I do to, to help this child? So you ha as a parent, you have the autonomy over your child. And uh, I think the first thing is to try and uh, substitute uh, the bread by... Uh, you give them all these other uh, good foods, some butternut, pumpkin, uh, some um, either some uh, bacon, some and and um, and maybe the arrow roots, the um, the uh, the sweet potatoes, and have a discussion. Tell them why. Tell them why. You can show them a picture of uh, a, a a a child with bow legs. Or rickets. Tell them if you continue eating this, or an obese child. These these are the repercussions, but uh, uh, like an an incentive mm. uh, to win them. And again, as a parent, lead by example. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Whatever you eat, also your child. That's what they will eat. Mm. Yeah. You can tell your child you don't eat bread. Eat, don't eat. Yes. So lead by example as well. Mm. Yes. Mm. Um, it happened with, uh, with, with my son, uh, he used to have bread, but now we, once we get all this enlightenment and we started actually winning him off bread as we led by example. Mm -hmm. And nowadays he switch from bread, he gets, he loves broccoli a lot and you can do that for, for the breakfast, get, get him all this and uh, you start loving him if you do by example and mm -hmm incentivize it mm -hmm. yes right example they, they they see what you do yes i see you know in terms of uh uh weight and uh the the pot belly issue there is somebody who is asking here good evening doctor uh, what would you suggest uh to on, on matters reducing or making the belly f become flat instead of being a pot belly uh kitambi mm, okay we, yeah Weight management. Then. Yes. Mm -hmm. So pot belly is, uh, is is what we call is just uh, um, visceral fat. Ah. Just visceral fat. So what 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 you want to limit the fat that is stored, and number one is get rid of carbohydrates. Why? When it comes to nutrition, when you eat, so the body is quite the way God created us. The body takes what it needs, mm -hmm. and get rid of what it doesn't need. If you eat an excess of proteins, what happens? It will be excreted in urea and uh, and so forth. If you eat um, fat, then the, the same way. But when you eat carbohydrates, what happens? Sugar, you take sugar and all that. And bo the body will consume or utilize the amount of sugar, the calories that you give it per the activity that you 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 involved in. Mm -hmm. If you get an excess of carbohydrates, the simple sugars and all that, what happens? The body converts that to fat. Mm. The body does not have a mechanism of actually getting rid of excess simple sugars. So it stores it in fat. And that's what you get as the visceral fat. Mm. So once you limit your body, um, you you limit your body from simple sugars. What, are, what happens to your body? Your body sh uh, switches to what kind of the ketogenic or fat-driven uh, uh, body in terms of getting its energy. Because the body is able to utilize fat to convert it its, to glucose or the simple sugars, so you will be burning fat, mm -hmm. the excess fat that you have stored, by just limiting your carbs. You don't even have to go to the gym. By just limiting your carbohydrates, mm -hmm. the body will be able now to utilize that fat to generate energy, and that's how you get rid of the pot belly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Before you now get to 
exercises and all that. That's uh, the key thing. We start from the kitchen, yeah. <laughs> as you put it. Well, let's look at one here from a parent again. Parents are really listening and uh, concerning the health of their children, very much concerned. And uh, this is uh, a father, Martin, and uh, says, my son is four years and has recently uh, been diagnosed with vitamin D deficiency. How can I help? And uh, what food or remedies can I take to improve uh, it to the normal range? That's from Martin. So if, if there's already deficiency, uh, it means we need to supplement. There's some very nice drugs that can be given. Um, and that can be calculated to the dose that is needed. And usually before you get any changes, um, usually the supplementation needs to um, span all the way to eight weeks uh, so that you can see any changes. From four to six, if there are any um, changes in the bone, any abnormality in the bone starts correcting. But it needs to minimum is actually eight to 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. Then you retest and see that. For the fruits is that emphasis on eggs is a cheap source that you can get. Exposure to sun, get vitamin D, minimize or completely get rid of simple sugars. Rice, bread, wheat, get rid of those. Uh, broccoli, spinach, um, skuma wiki, those are very good uh, sources of meat, uh, whichever form of it, chicken, fish, those, those are good uh, sources of uh, uh, meat. Om omena uh, has good good amounts of omega six and three. They are very nice. So those are sources I would re very very much recommend. Mm -hmm. Beans, um, yeah, they are they are, uh, they are good sources and cheap available sources that you can utilize in this time. Mm -hmm. But make sure your child is mm -hmm. active and they get enough sunlight exposure and then the diet mm -hmm. yes all right thank you so much dr Tarian. so time allows us to look at those questions but uh, probably your concluding thoughts i know we've um, touched on uh, this very area of uh, you know bone health and nutrition probably there is something that you you wanted to to emphasize on before we crown it all and then you can tell us how people can get in touch with uh, aicq international so the other part i think i have not uh touched very well is mm -hmm. a physical activity yeah. uh people need to be active and um i think there was uh, according to the orthopedic journal on in either england and also the indian orthopedic journal um they had discussion about osteo osteoporosis and how to delay it that is bone wasting that comes with either poor nutrition poor bone health and also age so the recommendation is that Weight-bearing activities such as running mm. and such as uh, some aerobic exercises, it's recommended to get, get a minimum of 30 minutes um, four times a week. Mm. A minimum of 30 uh, minutes of weight-bearing exercise or resistant activity. Resistance is things like um, a high-intense activity, burpees or going to the gym, lifting weights. So the cool thing with the weight-bearing activities, they preserve your peak bone mass, what you talked about, the maximum amount of bone that you have. Mm -hmm. And now for the resistance training, it actually builds your bone mass. And what happens is that um, it, it is able actually to reverse the effects of the osteoporosis, the bone wasting. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are actually programs recommending on how to go about this even for the older generation and combine that with uh, the nutrition as we have talked about you will be open. and children mm -hmm. especially we said the young during their growth period until people make sure your child is active because mm -hmm. that's the activity is what stimulates the bone mass the bone uh, density to actually uh, be quite um, too mature and get the optimum bone mass. If they are not active during that period, they have weak bone mass and they they are predisposed to osteoporosis mm -hmm. very high. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. So for uh, how you can get in touch with AICQ, yeah. we, we, are, we have a, um, our outpatient medical uh, clinic in West Point uh, building, Mpaka Road, Faith Floor or in Kijabe, 
Um, we have both for the children, we can be attended in the AIC Cure International, which is uh, the branded in green, or for the adults, you can be attended at the, A, uh, the AIC Kijabe, which is branded in blue. Mm. Yes. All right. so we, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, a lot of people have uh, shared their thoughts. Uh, just appreciating it. Let me read one more here from uh, Wellborn Career, saying very, very powerful knowledge by past, uh, not Pastor Doctor <laughs> Doctor Brian. I am very happy to see him elaborate on nutrition and bone health. Linet Wanjiru, Chidima Cherry, Emmy Musimbi. Yeah, lots of people here appreciating what you have done. And thank you. We're looking forward to having you next time or one of your colleagues from. Uh, 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 the, the, the institution and I believe that uh, we are going to learn a lot and um, send our greetings to uh, our friends there from AICQ and sure. uh, we wish you all the very best. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're yes. welcome. And that's just about it with uh, Dr. Brian um, uh, Maluki who is uh, an orthopedic surgeon from AICQ International uh, having uh, you know having had this wonderful time of conversation revolving around nutrition and body.